chords. This solo is so tasty and it follows the chord structure pretty well. This is A5, D5, C5, G5, D5 with F in the bass. It's exactly the changes for this solo, so it builds up from here, from the acoustic guitar part. The song is in A minor, but for some places it stays on this F6 for a long time, which is essentially D minor with F in the bass. And so A minor and D minor pentatonic scales work perfectly here. And the next step is some D minor pentatonic in this. shape to E chord nothing extraordinary here yet This looks like a C major C major pentatonic over a C major chord. So this um, this is G double stop thing in this D shape. In this particular run, the hardest beat is then I need to play this C note. And my index finger is actually making this mini bar thing, so I need to gradually put it one string down. So it's quite a hard thing to do in the left hand. So it's all the combination of pentatonic scales, A minor, C major and D minor, chord tones and also replacing this E with a diminished chord. But more on that in the next section. The hardest part of the solo, obviously, is this soul of the rear. D minor run. I'll play the individual notes first. Now, next is some careful right hand work. As the run is so fast, I'll provide the most efficient to me way to play it. Every microscopic move here matters, so pay attention. So I start with my thumb and index fingers in the right hand. And this mini bar with the ring finger in the left hand. Next I hit this E with my index finger in the left hand and the ring finger in the right hand. See that?
from E, then I play two hammer-ons in a row. At the same time, blocking, keeping blocking the bottom strings with my right hand. Because if I don't block it, it will be a mess. Next I hit this A with my ring finger again. That sets me up for this mini bar thing. Hammer on with my thumb. Now A with an index finger. hammer-ons index again and E with the thumb notice how this E note is the climax of this run so it, it belongs here on the very first beat with the thumb Everything leads to this point and it's all downhill from here. Or would be if it wasn't Mark Knopfler's solo. After the thumb, it's the index and two pull-offs. The mini bar again. Thumb index. Then thumb index pull off and slide in this chromatic line. Amazing, huh? Thumb index pull off and slide. Sounds like a book title. Thumb and index again. Now a hardcore part. This whole part is hardcore, but anyway. Thumb, hammer on, index, Thumb, index. So it has a certain rhythm to it. Get it? Finally, pull off, thumb index, thumb index. At the same time, don't forget to block all the unwanted strings. As many musicians and teachers would tell you, blocking strings is the hardest and the most important part of guitar playing because if you put all the parts correctly, including string muting, you get something like this. When properly learned, this lick can be played in at nearly any speed. So it's all about efficiency and control, but indeed the solo is supposed to be played in a very enjoyable tempo. It has a lot of this rhythm to it I just mentioned. <laughs> 
almost like something a drummer would play. This song, the second part at least, is extremely drums driven anyway. And I should mention this epic lick also has this distinctive D Dorian sound to it. Thanks to this B natural. I mentioned it many times in my videos, but what it is is just simply D minor scale the phrased sixth note. Makes it ever so enjoyable to the ear. Mark plays a lot of different takes on that run, starting from different places of the neck. It's again just one version, but what a version. This fast run continues with some bluesy bluesy D minor pentatonic lines. Now, next happens a a classic move used by probably every guitar player out there, from Django Reinhardt to John, to John Mayer, is replacing the E7 with a diminished one. E7 chord with a diminished one and using a diminished scale over it. And Mark goes as far as even playing a diminished arpeggio here. If you play it without context, it sounds almost like some sort of a metal tune. But tricks like this, as I said, use all the musicians on all the instruments. It's all it's a universal thing, one of the many. Should I say the ending of the solo is the easiest part? All it is is basically outlining the simple chords that are left in this solo, including E. The F C F G C F C to F and E to A. So, in conclusion, that's an extremely interesting solo to break down. It's a great, <clears throat> great combination of many, 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 many little things that creates this big picture, reminding us once again, the level of the musician we are talking about here. Not only did Mark play all this, and it's just one solo out of thousands he played, but he also composed all this and does that for half a century. And Speedway is an amazing song on its own, but more than that, in my songbook entry for this song. Keep muffling and thanks for watching.